You know, when I first started keeping fish, I thought that fish working their mouths pretty consistently, I, I, I thought that was normal. I thought that was just part of the whole uh, breathing and uh, normal behavior with fish. It's not, it's not. And when I first addressed the issue, uh, back when I was in California and had a, uh, a 60 gallon tank full of cichlids, and I addressed the issue from the, from the angle of adding oxygen, I was shocked. I was shocked at the difference it made, the before and after in the fish, in their activity, in their color, uh, their overall look and health. And uh, I was obviously, I was obviously starving them uh, from the, the amount of oxygen that they really needed to be in tip top condition. They were getting oxygen but they were having to work hard for it. And I get questions like this from time to time uh, about folks and their fish. I had a video a while back, I think it was called uh, uh, Choking Your Fish or something like that. Or <laughs> and uh, uh, I, I wanna go ahead and just do a follow-up sort of an Oxygen 2.0 and uh, share my thoughts with you on the subject and how important it is on a variety of levels in our aquarium so let's go ahead and jump right in. First off, I wanna thank you for uh, showing up and encourage you, if you like the content of this video, to go ahead and hit that uh, subscribe button, uh, the, uh, the bell and the thumbs up. We're, we're uh, rapidly approaching 50,000 subscribers and uh, you subscribing will really be appreciated and a big thank you to all of you out there who already have. So let's talk about oxygen. So first of all, unless your fish is involved in a uh, chase or is excited about something, they're being, they're being fed, uh, they're in the middle of being fed, they're competing for food with other fish, something like that, they really shouldn't be working their mouths. Uh, their mouths should be uh, closed unless they're, you know, they're, they're grazing or, or feeding and they should be swimming around and look very calm around the mouth and gills. Now, oxygen starvation doesn't mean just that, that condition where they're at the top and they're gasping. Uh, this happens sometimes, for example, if you raise the uh, temperature in the aquarium, uh, oxygen isn't getting into the water the way it should. The fish might move to the top where the, uh, where the, where the water is more oxygen rich. It can also happen if what you normally use to break up the surface, let's say you have hang on back filters that are breaking the surface tension uh, and allowing uh, you know, CO2 to escape, you know, bad gas to get out, oxygen to come in. Let's say you, you unplug those units for a long time or they break down while you're away the fish will move up to the top where there's more oxygen. So uh, the, that is like the final stages before a fish is uh, probably going to expire just from suffocating, just from a lack of oxygen. So don't, don't consider because your fish are not at the very top gasping that your tank might not be lacking oxygen. There are uh, levels of it. And, and one level would be the fish working their mouths uh, as they swim, gasping, gasping a little bit during just routine swimming around. It shouldn't be the case. Whether you have uh, a community tank full of fish that never stop moving, uh, a tank that has you know, slow moving uh, South Central American, you know, large uh, South and Central American cichlids that sort of lumber around, or even larger African cichlids if they're not involved in some uh, taxing, some, some strenuous activity, they really, uh, they, their mouths should be closed and they should be swimming around, uh, looking fairly calm and swimming all over the tank, not just the top. So there are signs that you look for with regards to oxygen uh, being low in the aquarium. And if you see those signs, you need to uh, check out a few things. Check out the temperature of the tank. Make sure it hasn't gotten, for some reason, uh, high because because of a heater malfunction, for example, or maybe you're keeping them in a room that's that's being kept too warm, 
uh, or maybe the return line that would normally be breaking up the surface, like like all my tanks that have that that have canisters, canister filters. The return lines are near the surface so that they break up the surface. Maybe that got moved a little bit. Maybe that shifted down a little bit. And now you're not getting that surface breakup. And as a result, the tank has gone low in oxygen. The fish that will suffer the most are, of course, the larger fish and the more active fish. Those are the ones that you'll lose first in the event of uh, a sudden drop in oxygen. Uh, these are one of those ask me how I know situations because I had it happen to me. It was a real a, a tough lesson. Extra tough because it was me that turned the, uh, the outputs around in the aquarium trying to create a certain kind of water circulation. And in doing so, I put the outputs below the surface of the water where before they were just slightly above. And the surface agitation stopped and by the next morning I had lost four or five of my largest fish. It was a horrible experience. If you see anything from gasping at the top to moderately working their mouths, check the temperature of the tank, make sure it's not too high, and make sure that what is normally breaking up the surface is breaking up the surface, that it hasn't shifted. And if everything there is normal, consider adding something that will break up the surface, whether it's a power head, a wave maker, uh, tilted slightly up to break up the surface, uh, repositioning of outputs, uh, the adding of a sponge filter uh, that, will, that will send up bubbles, that will break up the surface. Do something like that. And I'll tell you something, if your fish are working their mouths right now, but they seem otherwise uh, pretty healthy, just do this as an experiment. Add something to your tank that's going to break up the surface and you'll be surprised at the change. They'll, they'll, they'll seem more colorful, they'll have a better appetite, they'll seem healthier. I was shocked uh, when, when they were not having to spend time or energy uh, trying to get enough, enough oxygen. Another thing to keep in mind is that your beneficial bacteria also needs that oxygen to survive. Some are, are, are such good systems because as water cascades into the sump, it oxygenates. You don't have to oxygenate in the tank. If you have a sump, right, your oxygenation is occurring in the sump outside of the tank. Uh, you can oxygenate by the breakup of water from the, from the overflow or cascading water from a hang on back filter. There's lots of ways you can oxygenate. You can put a big air stone in there. Lots of ways to do it. So uh, your beneficial bacteria needs that oxygen. And if your tank becomes very oxygen starved, chances are you could also lose beneficial bacteria. So just things to keep in mind, be aware of it, watch your fish, watch their color, watch their behavior. In particular, are they working their mouths or are they hanging out near the top? Things of this nature and handle it quickly because um, it will stress them out. And when fish get stressed out, not only can the oxygen get to them, but they also will be predisposed to illness, injury, uh, things of that nature, and uh, you know they, they can they can be weaker than normal and be taken out by a, by an aggressive fish, you know all these different things. It, it's a domino effect. So uh, just like you want to keep the aquarium clean, you want to provide them with good nutritious food. You must also provide them with with plenty of oxygen. Okay. Now one last tip: if you can keep live plants, live plants will remove bad gas CO2 and add oxygen to your aquariums. And uh, this is why live, live plants are so cool. Unfortunately, because of the kind of key, uh, these large cichlids, I can't really keep those, but I can with community fish, and that will be the next phase of what I'm going into. So watch for that in 2023. Okay, so any comments you have, any experience, any tips you have about oxygen, be sure to include them below the video in the comment section. We all learn from each other around here, and I appreciate when you do comment under the videos. And I hope to see you on Saturday for the Cichlids and Coffee live stream at 11 a.m. Central. And if you want to support the channel further, be sure to subscribe and consider becoming a monthly Patreon supporter. That's with the Garage Gang. It's as little as $3 a month. And the details are in the description under the video. Thank you, my friends. You're the best. I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.